Well, hello, this is Donna Brown from DB Tech Solutions. Happy New Year to everybody. I hope you've all had a great um, Christmas vacation and Christmas break. I personally, I'm just coming out of COVID, so, um, but I wanted to do this recording and have a great start for the new year. Despite all of that, um, I am very optimistic about the new year. And as with the new year, we always have this um, New Year's resolution hanging around. And uh, quite frankly, for me, I have achieved one of mine, which is to lose a few pounds. And thankfully, COVID helped with that. And I wouldn't recommend it that way to, to lose and get your um, pounds off through COVID. But um, it happened for me. Um, but some of you might have um, financial related um, resolution. And so here's hoping that I can send something your way and something to think about. Now, I personally, <clears throat> I personally think that we should be educating our children, our young minds about finances, starting from kindergarten into elementary grades and that they should be financially savvy by high school or middle school. Um, but unfortunately, that's not the case. And so we're taught with this, you know, math, mathematical solutions that I personally have to endure, but never have to use again in my life after I've graduated. Um, but whereas finances and money, we use it all the time. And, but we're not taught a lot about it. So I just wanted to give you some tidbits here. Um, in the fall, actually, last year, I had an opportunity to teach at the Vance Granville College, uh, volunteer as a parent to teach about financial literacy. And that was a really great experience for me. And that's where the passion started for me and be able to reach out the young minds. And they had so many questions. They had questions about retirement. They had questions about 401k. Some of them were working. So they're exposed to all this um, information that I knew and they're not so sure about <clears throat> So, excuse me. And so it was a great opportunity to, to educate uh, people there um, with financial literacy. Um, so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail, but I would want some things brought up. For example, I'm going to share my screen here so that you can see what I'm looking at. <clears throat> when I was at the college, I taught the kids, you know, a lot of them had banks. And uh, I asked them, well, what, what, what interest are you making in your bank? And, you know, and so we've looked at it. Here's one, for example, this is for citizen. If you had a bank account, you would be earning a whopping 0.03% in your savings. Let's look at Wells Fargo, for example. There you have it, it's 0.01%. And I'm sure there's different, uh, uh, different plans, different things, but they're about uh, the same amount of rate. Let's look at state uh, employee credit union. Here you are, you got 0.05%. And so <clears throat> what I was trying to show them is that I have this calculator. Einstein said um, the most powerful force in the universe is compound interest. And I'm trying to teach that with the young minds that you have the time on your hand. When you start investing at a very young age, um, you have the compound, the power of compound interest on your side. And it's never too late to start no matter what age um, to start investing in securing some financial nest egg for yourself. So for example, if you started out with $1,000 and you're saving that for 10 years, and if we've looked at the first citizens of Wells Fargo, let's just go with 0.03% interest. And if you didn't add anything else, um, let's look at what happened to your $1,000. Oh, it wants me to put zero. All right, so <clears throat> your $1,000 in 10 years, made you $3.53. Well, that's 10 years. What can you get for that earning? And the fact that we are at a very high inflation rate, your money is losing money just sitting in savings account. All right, so let's um, redo this report. So it's $10, I mean, 10 years and three bucks. Is that a good savings for you? Or is that a good savings for the bank? So what the bank does is they'll, okay, invest with us. We'll pay you 3%, 0.03% for the money, for letting us use your money. But what if you could make 6% instead of 0.03%? 
what will your money look like then? In 10 years, your $1,000 would be earning $790 of interest. That's you know close to almost doubling it, right? So that's what the bank does, is that we'll take your $1,000, we'll give you three bucks for it in 10 years, and we're gonna go around, I'm the bank, I'm gonna go around, turn around, and find it somewhere I can invest a minimum of 6%, maybe 8, 7%. Holy, let's see if we can make what our money would look like if we make 10%. If the bank made 10%, their 1,000, they your 1,000 would have made them 1,593 in interest. It's more than doubled. Well, yes, that's the total interest. So <clears throat> they're gonna turn around and pay you the four bucks in 10 years while they make this money, they make the difference. And that's the reality, folks, is when you let your money sit in the an account, in a saving account, checking account, that's not really earning for you, especially if your intention is to save it for the future, it's just going to lose money sitting there. Okay, so where can you get a 10%? Where can you get a 6%? Where can you get anything above you know, 1% that the bank is giving you, 0.03% that the bank is giving you. Anything would be better than that, right? So where can you get this return? So <clears throat> I wanted to take you a little bit of a history of investing here. Um, I know for my age, I've learned a lot about stocks and the market. <laughs> and our kids are learning about the stocks and the market and the digital currencies, believe it or not. And when I was at the college, I've I was asked a few questions about virtual currency, which is fine, that's it's their world. And don't you wish you knew what you know now, back when you were in high school, or back when you were younger, that you would have taken advantage of this information and invest and save a nest egg for yourself. All right, so let's go through the history of investing just very quickly. If you've heard of the rule of 72, it's basically <coughs> how long the number of years it will take for your money to double for a 3%, minimum 3%, your 2000 will take, it will take 24 years for it to double. Okay, so take that and then another 48 years for that to total for that to double. And back in the days, 3% is what the bank gives you. We don't see that anymore. It has been many, many years. Okay, so. Here we are. If you are earning 6%, then your 2000 will double in just 12 years in half of what the previous one and so on and so forth. Um, what if you're making 12%? So let's have a look at what stocks virtual versus mutual funds are. Um, if, if you are my age, you'd recognize the ones on the left here. And Ron, we know we went it bust and blockbuster. Well, that's gone. You know, welcome to the live streaming world. Toys R Us, that's gone. So these are individual stocks. If you had bought them and invested in them directly, then the, the business would have gone bankrupt and you have lost everything. So that's in buying an individual stock. Whereas if you invested in a mutual fund, mutual fund consists of a portfolio, which is a, a makeup of a whole lot of things, a whole bunch of different companies whose goals are to be profitable. What are the chance that Dunkin' Donut will go out of business at the same time as Starbucks or McDonald's or Walmart, right? It's, it's, it's almost inconceivable. If, if that were the case, then something's really gone wrong with the world, like World War III or something. But these are businesses that are in it to make profit and they have board of directors to make sure they're profitable, they're in line with what their goals. Um, but even so, if you invest in a mutual fund in a portfolio like this, you would only, if Dunkin' Donuts went out on business, you still have 99 others. For example, if this is a company a portfolio that's made up of 100 company, you still have the 99 others to, to have, have, in, have invested in. So <clears throat> if you have 12% interest, if you can get that from the market, then you have your money working for you, doubling, sooner, a lot, lot, lot sooner than if you were at 3%, 6%, well, way better than what you were getting if you were at the bank at 0 0.01 or 0 0.03%. So 
Um, this is the history of investing here. Let's just look at the S and P 500. You hear it all the news all the time. Well, what is it? Well, what are the 500? So if you look at the first 10 on this list, I'm sure most of you recognize it. You participated in in the market, whether you you want it or not. You, you have Apple phone. You you use Facebook. All right, so you Johnson Johnson, all that vaccine, look at 15 to 20. Walt Disney, you know, if you're so streaming to Disney, Netflix, Hulu, whatever, you use PayPal, all this are the makeup of the S&P 500. So if one or two or three or five of this go out of business, your money is not lost, it's still invested. There are other many companies that are involved and that will pull the portfolio up because that is the goal. So, and, and when you invest in the market, um, there's always this fear that you're gonna lose everything. Um, but again, you have to understand um, what the makeup of what you're investing in. And you can be in different before, you can be aggressive, you can be growth, you can be in moderate, you can be conservative growth, you can have income. So you all have these options. Like if you look at the 30s in the Great Depression, you have, if you had invested $1,000 there after the decade, you would have had 995, you would have lost five bucks for the whole decade during the depression, the worst times in our history here. <clears throat> but if you had been consistently investing like $25 here, $50 here, there, every month, look at what you would have been purchasing right here on the bottom section. Um, you would have been investing and buying at a half price, less than a half price down here below 500. And if you take, if you purchase something there in 1931, it would have gone up and would have more than doubled your, your purchases there. So that's called the dollar cost averaging. So if you're consistent in investing, you're buying at different times, um, you could potentially end up on a positive note, okay? So there's that. And then there's the 40s. Look what happened if you invested a thousand and forty in the 1950, your $1,000 would have made money. And it doesn't matter what portfolio you're in, your income, conservative, moderate growth, or aggressive. The market gave you a much better return than if you had saved your money in the bank, okay? The 50s, the same thing. All right, your $1,000. Could have potentially been 5865. 5, okay. Um, the 60s, the same thing. Oh no, it's you know, it's always that thing of it's going to crash, you can't sustain it for long. Well, lo and behold, in the next year, there's a little bit of crash on 73, but it bounced back up and your thousand is still positive. In the 80s, the same thing. Lots going on in the 80s. Look at your 1,000, would have invested you. A thousand would have been over five thousand. Mm -hmm. Even if you are in the income or conservative, it would have tripled your investment. Okay. In the nineties, again, the market will run; it's going to crash. But here we are; um, it's still positive. Okay, the two thousand, we had a crash in 08, but it's still a positive return in the long run. And again, here we are. In the most current situation here, this record shows till 2010 to 2019, you have your money working for you, okay? <clears throat> so in the long run, if you had started with $1,000 in the 1930s to 2019, your 1,000 would have been, at uh, the highest point would be 4,579,611. And at the lowest point, your 1,000 would have been $260,034. So there you have it. Um, that is the beauty of investing in the long term and in the market. Uh, you can get much better return than if you were to just have it sitting in your bank account. Now, of course, you can have many different options. Um, you can be in any of these portfolios, like aggressive growth, moderate, conservative growth, or income. But anything better than it's just having your money sitting in a bank account, okay? So we've seen it before <clears throat> that if you had it, 
if you just have it sitting there at 0 0.01 cents, the money that you're having sit in the bank is good for the bank. They're making money on your money. Um, why not you do it yourself? Why not have the opportunity to invest in yourself so that you are able to um, have a better nest egg for yourself in the future? Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. But hopefully um, you get some ideas of what I was trying to share. Um, a lot of the times people think of financial advisors are for the rich, um, but I'm here for you. If you have any questions, if I can help you at all, get started and feel financially secure. Even if you start investing $25 a month, $50 a month, pay yourself first, okay? I know we, we, you got people buy coffee, people pay phone, people subscribe to all kinds of um, streaming devices, and we don't mind paying for all of these. But I want you to think about the opportunity that you can pay for yourself. Pay yourself first and invest in yourself so that someday when you're looking at retirement, you know, you can feel a little bit more secure. And it doesn't have to start in a big thousands of dollars of money. You can be consistent. You can start with $25. This is what's trying to teach the, the college students, the high school students, is that you start now. Now is the time to start, even if it's just $25 a month. It's a habit of saving, and it's a habit that will get you better in the long run, get you in financial security in the long run. So if your hope and if your financial resolution is to be better financially, let's you and I get together. And I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Um, I've got tax season also. And that's also part of the planning that can be done with your investments. Um, but I do hope that 2022 is gonna be a better year for all of us and that you can find better opportunities to, to have a happier life and have a more financial secure life. And you can start that today. Again, this is Donna at DB Tax Solutions. Hope you find this tidbits a little bit helpful. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me and to email me, text me, or message me. I'll be here. Have a happy new year. And I'll till next time. It's again, it's Donna from DB Tax Solutions.